Hello and welcome to an Apple Script episode of Apple a Day. This is another episode where I'm going to show you how to access system settings and toggle a feature on and off. Check this out. I'll run the script that we're about to create from the shortcuts menu and watch this automation magic. Pretty cool. Thanks to viewer Talentoman or Talent Omen. I'm not sure how he wants to pronounce it, but anyway, thanks for that. He asked for a script to toggle the function keys, so they switched between normal function keys to MacBook keys. I'll show you the setting that I'm talking about. I'm gonna go into System Settings, and I'm gonna go down to Keyboard, and then I'm gonna click on Keyboard Shortcuts, and then select Function Keys, and then select the Use F1, F2 keys as standard function keys. That's the setting we're gonna be turning off and on. So by default, these function keys perform MacBook functions like adjusting the screen brightness. To use them as standard function keys, you have to hold down the FN button, which is located at the bottom left of the keyboard. Turning this option on reverses that functionality. So with this feature turned on, you would then have to hold the FN button and then say the F1 key to decrease the brightness. So as you can see, doing this manually is a real pain. It's a lot of steps. So today we're gonna write an Apple script to automate this feature. I did a pretty detailed tutorial on scripting system settings in the past, and here's a link to that video right here. But don't worry, I'm going to assume you've not seen that video and we're gonna do everything from scratch. Note that I'm currently running Mac OS Sonoma 14.2.1, so this script won't work in previous versions of the Mac OS. So let's get started. Launch the script editor application and select new document. And now let's type in our first line of code. We're gonna communicate with system settings. So type in tell application and then in double quotes, system settings. Then we want to make sure this is the active application. So in the next line, type in the word activate. Now, before we do anything else, every tell statement in AppleScript requires an end tell so that AppleScript knows when we're done talking to an application. So I'm gonna press return a few times to give us some space and type in end tell. If I press the hammer tool on the top right, the script will compile and let us know if there's any errors. Everything looks good so far. Now, I've had many issues with running Apple scripts where the code executes faster than the target application is responding. So I like to put in delay statements when needed. Uh, this is important when we start to use the system events to perform mouse clicks, because if you click on a button, it may take a second for the application to respond and open a window, for instance. So I'm gonna delay for one second right here. I'll type in delay space one. I'm also going to add comments in the code so we can keep track of what's going on. So above the delay one, I'm gonna type in a comment. Now comments don't affect the code at all. They're just messages to the programmer and helpful when you need to make changes to the code later on. So you enter a comment in AppleScript by typing in two dashes in a row. So above delay one, type in dash dash wait for settings to open. And now the first thing we wanna do is move to the keyboard pane of the settings window. I'll type in another comment, dash dash, move to the keyboard pane. So in order to figure out how to change the pane, we need to know the ID or the name of the pane that we wanna change it to. So to better explain it, I'll go over the system settings window. When I change the selection on the left, it displays a different pane on the right, and we want the keyboard pane. So to figure this out, we're just gonna return a list of all of the available panes, and then we can find the keyboard pane within that list. So let's do that now. In the next line, I'm gonna type in this temporary code, return properties of every pane. I'll run this script, and in the results section, you can see a whole bunch of data. Now somewhere in here is the keyboard pane ID. With my mouse cursor in the results section, I'll press Command F to do a search. Then I'll type in the word keyboard and you can see it found two matches. We need to get the ID. So after the property name of ID, we'll select everything in quotes. And that's the name or the ID of this keyboard pane. And make sure you select the quotes too. I'm gonna press Command C to copy it. And then back in the script, I'll triple click on the line that returns the properties. Triple clicking just simply selects the entire line. And then I'm gonna type in set the current pane to pane ID, and then after the word ID, I'll type another space, 
and Command V to paste in the ID that we just copied. And that's that com.apple.keyboard-settings.extension. So <laughs> a, really, a really complicated ID. I'll go back to system settings and change the pane back to appearance and then run the script. This should change the pane to keyboard. Hey, and it does. So one hurdle done. Next, we need another delay to give it time to change. I'll add a comment first, wait for selection to complete, and then type in on the next line, delay one for a one second delay. So from this point on, we can't change anything else by talking directly to system settings. We have to use something called system events to mimic the mouse clicking on various elements of the current application. So I'll type in another comment, use system events to communicate. And in the next line, I'll type in a tell statement to talk to system events. Tell application system events, and that's in double quotes, to tell application process system settings, and that's also in double quotes. This just means that we're talking to system events, and within system events, we want that application to communicate with system settings. I'll add a matching end tell. I'll press return a few times and type in end tell. Just a side note before I continue, in order for AppleScript to communicate using system events, we have to give accessibility access to the AppleScript application. You do that in system settings. So open up system settings and then go to privacy and security. And in there, select accessibility. And then find script editor. And if it's not already on, turn it on to give access. It should ask you for a password I'll just use my fingerprint on my laptop. And while we're here, we're also gonna need this for the shortcuts application. So go to shortcuts and turn it on for that as well. And that's it, go ahead and close system settings. So here's where it gets tricky. We need to click on this keyboard shortcuts button, but unfortunately we can't just say something like click button keyboard shortcuts, it doesn't work that way. We have to go through the hierarchy of controls in order to find the button. I'll create a new script by selecting new from the file menu. And this is gonna help us drill down and find what we're looking for without having to use the main script, which has all of the delay statements in there. I'll select and copy this tell statement and the end tell, and then paste it into the new script window. Now I want to get a list of all of the controls or the UI elements on this window. When we change the pane to keyboard, this becomes the keyboard window. And within this window, all of the UI elements are inside a numbered group. This is usually group one. So let's find all of the controls inside group one. So I'm gonna type in a line of code, tell group one of window keyboard in double quotes. Then type in a new line, return every UI element. And then on a new line, type in end tell to close the tell statement. I'll press the hammer icon to compile it. Looks good. So now I'll run it and it's returned a single item, something called a splitter group. So a splitter group is basically a split screen of multiple control panels. So let's dive into the splitter group. I'll add splitter group one of to this tell statement and then run that. So we have several groups and another splitter. I've already figured out that the button we want is in group two. That's the last group here. So I'll add group two of to the tell statement and run it again. And now I only get one element, it's another group. So I'll add group one of to the tell statement and run one more time. And again, we get one element. This time it's a scroll area, which makes sense since we can scroll this keyboard pane. I'll add scroll area one of to the tell statement and run again. And now we get a bunch of data. Each of these items is a group, and I've already figured out that the keyboard shortcuts button is in the second group. So I'll add group two of to the tell statement and run again. Now we get a lot of controls back. So how do we find the button that we want? Well, it's not obvious. There's elements called buttons in these results, but they're not named. They're just button one, button two, and button three. Well, I tested all of them with the command click button to find the right one. I ran click button one, click button two, and click button three. And it turns out we want button three. So back to the main script, I'll add a new comment, talk to the group containing the keyboard shortcuts button. 
Then I'm gonna copy the tell statement from the other script by pressing Command C and pasting it into our main script with Command V. And it should read, tell group two of scroll area one of group one of group two of splitter group one of group one of window keyboard. So <laughs> really messy. Uh, and this is the hierarchy and this is how it works. Every time you see the word of, it's referring to a parent item. So now we're talking to the group that contains this button. So we can actually click on the button. A lot of comment, click on the keyboard shortcuts button. Then type in the line, click button three. We need to add one more line to close this tell statement. So on a new line, I'll type in end tell. I'll close the settings window so we can test the script. This should open up that system settings window and go down to the keyboard pane and click on the keyboard shortcuts button. I'll run it now. And it works. So now we have to talk to this new window that opened up. This type of window is called a sheet. Let's add another delay to make sure we give this sheet window enough time to open. First, a lot of comment. Wait for the keyboard shortcuts window sheet to open. Then I'll type in the delay statement for half a second. Delay 0.5. Let's go back to our testing script. I'll need information about this sheet window. So I'm going to replace the tell statement with tell sheet one of window one. I'll run it. And this gives us a single element, group one. So I'll add group one of to the tell statement and run it again. And this returns a splitter group as the only element. I'll add splitter group one of to the tell statement and run again. So now I have a group and another splitter group and a second group. Well, I did some tests and I already know that this section on the left, which is what we're interested in, is in group one. So I'll add group one of to the tell statement and run it once more. And this returns a scroll area. So let's add that to the tell statement. I'll add scroll area one of to it and run again. And the results contains one item, something called an outline, which is what this type of control actually is. It's called an outline. So I'll add outline one of to the statement and run it again. And now we have a bunch of UI elements returned. And each one of these is a row within this outline. There's a total of 13 rows. We want to select the row called function keys. Unfortunately, they're not named, so I have to assume they're numbered in order. Launchpad would be row one, so that makes function keys row 12. Let's test this to see if we're right. I'll enter the line of code, select row 12. And what this is doing is selecting row 12 of this outline, which is in the scroll area, which is in a group. And this goes all the way up the hierarchy to be within the sheet within the window. I'll run it. And it works. It selected the function keys item. So let's copy this code to the main script. I'll select the tell block of code, copy it with command C, and paste it into the main script with command V. And just above it, I'll add a comment. Select the function keys item. Then I want to add another delay for half a second, but first I'll add a comment. Wait for function keys to be selected. And then the delay statement, delay 0.5. By the way, when you do run your finished script and you get errors because UI elements can't be found, you can try increasing the length of time for these delays. For example, if you want to rule out that it's a delay problem, you can just up all of the delays to maybe three or four seconds. And if you still get errors, then you know there's some other problem in your code. Now, we want to click on this switch right here. This also acts like a checkbox. I'll add another comment. Click on the use F1 comma F2 checkbox switch. Now let's figure out how to access the switch. I'll go back to my test script and I'll update the tell statement to read tell splitter group one of group one of sheet one of window one. And I'll add the line return every UI element and then run it. And I get three items. This time I want to look inside group two. So I'll add group two of to the tell statement and run it. And this contains a scroll area element. So I'll add scroll area one of to the statement and run it. I get one group item back. So again, I'll add group one of to the statement and run it again. Okay, now we're getting somewhere. We have all the controls on this page. If you look here, this is the checkbox that we want to click on. I'll just copy this checkbox ID and type in another line in our test script. 
I'll type in click checkbox and then paste in the name of the checkbox. And it should be in quotes, use F1 comma F2 comma ETC period keys as standard function keys. So the text that's displayed, it turns out to be the ID as well. So I'll run this script to see if the value changes. And it did, works great. I'll run it again and it changes back. So now let's add this tell block back to the main script. I'll select it all and copy it and then paste it into the main script just below the last comment we entered. Now let's add another delay to wait for the checkbox to change. And of course, we're gonna put a comment in, wait for checkbox to change. And we need to wait a half a second. So I'll type in delay 0.5. And at this point, I'm gonna compile it to make sure there's no errors. I'll click on the hammer icon and so far so good. So now we need to close this window. We need to click on that done button. So let's go back to the test script. And this was inside group two of the splitter group. So I'll change the tell statement to read tell group two of splitter group one of group one of sheet one of window one. And I'll put this line back in, return every UI element. And I'll run this and you can see that the second element in here is a button. Well, that's the done button. We want to click on that button. So I'm gonna type in click button one. So if I run this, that done button will get clicked and the sheet window will close. Running it. And it worked. So I'm just gonna copy this block back to the main script, but first I'll add a comment, click on the done button, and then paste in the code block. Okay, we're almost done. After this tell block, which communicates with system events, I'm gonna add another delay. So underneath the end tell, I'm gonna put in a comment, wait for window to close. We only wanna wait half a second, so type in delay 0.5, and then we want to run the quit command. And we're still inside the main tell, which is communicating with system settings. And in there, we want to tell the application to quit. So I'll add another comment, quit the system settings application, and then type in quit. And that's it. This script should work. I'll close the system settings application, and then I'm going to run this script. It opens the app, goes down to the keyboard, clicks keyboard shortcuts, selects the function keys from the sheet window, and then clicks on the checkbox switch closes the window, and then it quits. Perfect. If I run it again, it will simply toggle that value. Okay, this is great. So now we just need to add this script to the shortcuts application. So I'll type in command space to bring up spotlight search, then type in shortcuts. Click on this plus button to add a new shortcut. And over on the right of the window, select scripting. Then scroll down to the script editor section and select run Apple script by double clicking on it. And that will create a new Apple script command. Go back to the script editor and select your script by pressing command A to select all, then copy it with command C. Then go back to shortcuts and remove the your script goes here line and paste in your new script by pressing command V. Press the hammer tool to make sure it compiles okay. And everything looks good, so let's try running it and test it out. I'll press the play button, and if you haven't previously authorized shortcuts to run AppleScript, you might get this warning. Allow new shortcut to run an AppleScript. If you see this message, just click on allow. Then the script should proceed normally and then toggle the function keys setting. It's working perfectly. Let's give this script a name. At the top of the window where it says run AppleScript, I'm gonna type in the name of the shortcut. I'm gonna call it toggle function keys. Press return, and then over on the right, click on this shortcut details icon, then select the pin in menu bar option so this shortcut will be visible in the menu bar. And that's it. Close this window and then quit the shortcut application. And to test it out, I'll just select it from the shortcuts menu in the menu bar. There it is right there. I'll select toggle function keys and the script runs beautifully. So that's all there is to it. You just learned how to write Apple script to communicate with system settings and to use system events. And you also learned how complicated it can be to find the correct UI element that you wanna click on. But with a little bit of patience and trial and error, you can always figure it out. Hopefully you found this helpful. As usual, please like, subscribe, and comment. I'm John Martins, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next episode of Apple A Day.